Hello, hello, and we're back to uh, explain how this function works, or this class. So we'll start from top to bottom, uh, which means that we'll be starting right here in the middle of the arguments. So our first thing is FPS. So if our FPS is equal to null, and our FPS is greater than or equal to 33, we set it to 1. Now, you think that this dot frames per second FPS equal to 1 means 1 frame per second. Well, in the back end, in this case, it does not. It actually means play uh, 30 frames per second. So it's a little bit inverted. 1 FPS, uh, or this dot FPS equal to 1 is 30 frames per second. You ask, why is that? So inside of our main call, whenever we draw, we draw at an interval of 30 frames per second. Now in there, we're going to call our animation draw once every update of that draw. So we're drawing at 30 frames per second. So to fully ex understand it, we'll take this FPS counter also. These both are, go hand in hand. So FPS counter is zero. Every single time we draw, we increment the FPS counter by one. So if we in increment the FPS counter by one, um, obviously, uh, it's, uh, the next part, sorry, the next part is this if statement. This, if this, uh, if the FPS counter is greater than or equal to FPS, then this the FPS counter is equal to zero. Now the next time we come through the draw, it says it's zero and it goes to the next frame. Um, so you can see how setting the FPS equal to one will be 30 frames per second. So we hit the draw. Uh, let's just take consider that our FPS is equal to one. We hit the draw. Uh, our FPS counter is zero, so let's go ahead and shift the the cropping so that it crops correctly blah 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 we draw the image and then we say hey FPS counter go up one and it goes up one now FPS counter is equal to one so now the FPS counter is greater if the FPS counter is greater than or equal to FPS then do uh, FPS counter is zero and is FPS counter equal to the FPS of one Yes, it is. So that means that this FPS counter is getting set to zero every update of the draw, every draw. So that is 30 times per second. That is the reason why we also divide our FPS. Uh, our FPS is 33 divided by the FPS that's passed in. So if I say 12 frames, then it does 33 divided by 12. And then when we go through here, the FPS counter will hit... Will hit um, will hit and uh, once it gets up to 12 times it will skip or it'll go to the next one so uh, sorry uh, when, when it gets past the FPS it will go to the next one so that is basically what it is so if we passed in one frame per second if we passed one into FPS then we're gonna have to set 33 divided by 1 which will be 33 so when this goes through, uh, technically 33, it's in milliseconds, so basically 30 times a second. Um, when this goes through, it'll have to go through 30 times, which is one full second before it goes to the next image. So that's how FPS is uh, tackled. So in our next one, we have frame. If we go down, uh, we don't see it used anywhere. That's interesting. Um, I might have added this at one point and removed it, so let me check with my my handy dandy documentation real quick and see if I accidentally missed something. So nope, um, we don't use this at all actually. I must have been using it for something and then removed it. So we'll just comment that that one out for now. And now we'll do the width. The width is obviously important for the cropping. Um, so we want to have the width for when we're cropping, and we want it to be uh, same scale. So we pass the crop width and the actual width into the crop and the position width. So uh, I'm not going to go into detail about this call because I did it in a previous one. So uh, you can look at it and uh, understand how that's going. But the width up here is uh, 
part of the crop position dot x. So I guess a good way to explain how this thing is working is to do a little bit of uh, yeah that was amazing. Let's do a little bit of uh, some line work here. So this will be my awesome amazing animation sprite sheet thing. Uh, doo -doo -doo, we have columns and we have rows. In fact, this probably will explain pretty much all the rest of it. So just uh, watch this, go over the code, maybe watch this a couple times, and uh, check back with the code, and I'm pretty sure that you'll see how this is uh, used. So I have an animation. Um, let's actually get a brush here. I have an animation happening, this thing's getting bigger and bigger, blah blah blah. And then it gets really big and then it gets smaller and it goes over here and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller and then it, et cetera, et cetera. So we want it to animate one, two, three, four, five. We're animating across and down. So if I created a uh, box here that I can move around and do 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 explain stuff with. Alright, so we start off at uh, over here and then it says all right it's zero so we're starting the animation bah we hit that animation frame updates bah we go to the next one frame updates bah we go to the next one etc 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 all right frame updates da oh there's nothing over here all right let me subtract or let me add one to the rows bah and let me set my column counter back to zero yes sound effects are important so now we're back at the second one and we we've added a row and now we're here and we just continue dot 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 oh there's nothing here add a row go back to zero dot 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 oh there's nothing here add a row go back to zero and it just keeps doing this so now we iterate through it iterates through fairly quickly and then it gets to the end oh my goodness there's nothing left and there's no row below me all right let's just go back to zero zero and let's start animating it. Dot 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 etc. So that's how the animation is handled. So this is one image with a sequence of with a bunch of little images inside that do the animation basically. A bunch of static images that are animated. And we're basically taking this little window and going across each one to play the animation. So, um, let me go back and make sure I haven't covered everything. Oh, or, uh, that I have covered everything, sorry. So, our limit. Uh, what is this limit, by the way? This limit is, say, we don't want to play... Uh, I closed my thing. Say, we don't want to play all our animations. We don't want to play 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. We just want to play 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Well, our limit, if we set it to 1, will iterate to 8, and once it gets there, see, once we flip to the next one, if the limit counter, which is the current limit, um, is less than the limit, then we increment the, li the limit in the column. Uh, you can see this by it going from one column to the next. But otherwise, if our limit is now above or, uh, or equal to our if our limit counter is above or equal to our limit, hey, we are at our limit. We are at 8, and I don't want to go to 9. So now we go back to the column start, which will be 0. And we go back to the row start, which will be 0. And we put our limit counter back to 0. And then we just continue and do it again. So that way we don't have to play every animation in a sprite sheet. We can play a specific set of animations. The first row, or uh, the, the first row and a half, or so, so on and so on. So uh, that's how we make use of the limit. So the limit is actually really important in our sprite sheet. Uh, the image is straightforward. The position is straightforward. It's just the position of the uh, animation. Uh, and the crop position is used for cropping, which we went over. So um, yeah, just look over this. Have a uh, Just check it over, see if you see anything crazy. 
Um, in the next video, I'm going to test this out, this idea out, uh, test out this animation, and see if it works. So I will see you in the next one.